Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Between Two Brokers. It's been a month, but you haven't lost that. <laughs> I've been practicing that mood. <laughs> All morning. Um, have you missed me? Yeah. I, I, I feel like I haven't talked to you in forever. Yeah. Well, we'll do a catch-up episode at some point, but um, because it's been so long... Podcast at smithspencer.com. Overfloweth. Overfloweth. Good. A bounty of emails and questions. And so I hope you're ready to answer, Schmoop. Yes. Are you? Yes. It's Schmoopy time. Um, okay. Dear Schmoopy, I am a new agent going for my first listing. I am so nervous. Any tips, suggestions you have? Do I need to bring a market analysis with comps, et cetera, and a listing presentation? What do I need to know, Schmoopy? I don't think you and I are the right people to answer this question. No, because um, definitely not. We go empty-handed. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes uh, I'll bring an orchid. Yeah. Or well, a wine. That's a nice touch. <laughs> bring an orchid or a wine. Um, um, I, if it's your fur, I would say just bring a... Bring your broker or whoever you look at as a mentor in your office. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, listing presentations and market analysis and that kind of stuff, it never hurts. But um, I, to me, it's not necessary. I know you don't do them. I don't do them. Mm -hmm. uh, so my advice is to do whatever makes you feel confident. So I feel like that's a like definitely in the beginning, I feel like that's a little bit of a crutch because you don't really... I don't know. I mean, I would say in the beginning, be as prepared as possible. Go ahead and have the listing presentation. Go ahead and do the market analysis and bring it with you. But if they're not like responding to it, you kind of have to feel out your, um, your client or potential client. Like I can't stand paper and I'm all like about feeling and reading the person. And it's all about like the yeah. person. It's not like, you know, there isn't inf information on a piece of paper that's going to help me make a decision about whether or not to hire you, but that's me. Yeah. So that's kind of how I approach, um, you know, the people that I work with. And also, to be fair, when Aaron and I go for listing appointments, not all the time, but I would say 90% of the time we're already getting the listing and we know it, yeah. so that doesn't really count. Um, and I also think market analysis, you know, for somebody who's like highly analytical, I think real estate is very difficult to analyze. And so I don't always encourage it because I think that comparables and market analysis can be very confusing unless you're selling a house in a neighborhood where it really is going to be like an apples yeah. to apples comparison. Like, you have a 3,500 square foot John Wheeland house that was built in 2010 and that's what yours is, right? And they're like basically the same exact thing. Um, but I just think that there's so much variability in how you would value a property that like when you go and you take somebody who, to a, take all this information to a seller who doesn't like really understand what we understand as real estate agents on how to value things... I feel like that's worked against me sometimes because they're like, oh, well, that one was $1,000 a square foot. And, you know, look at my incredible property, which is not always the case. Yeah. Le less is more, in my opinion. Yeah, and you can always email stuff after the fact. Like, I think about it from an appraiser's standpoint. Like, when an appraiser is going to a property to do the appraisal, he doesn't look at the comps first. Right. You look at the property first, and then you compare it to the other comps. And so doing all that stuff beforehand, mm -hmm. yes, you should have an idea mm -hmm. of what it should sell for, but it should be a wide range. And then after you see it, and then you go back to the comps, then you can narrow it down. So yeah. what to take with you, I would say a good attitude, compliments, yes, um, and a friend. Yeah, yeah, a friend. And then lots of, I mean, I, you need to take notes. Like I, yeah. I, I always ask people when I go for um, a listing appointment I'm like why did you buy this house yeah what are the things that you absolutely love about this house and led you to buy it and then like what are the things that you would change because I need to know what the problems are with the property or the neighborhood or whatever just so that I can prepare for those 
um, those types of situations. But yeah, same thing when I'm showing a house. I have people try to nail me down all the time, which I like start to make fun of them after a while because they're not it's, they're not gonna do it. But like when I'm showing a house, you know, my buyer will be like, "What do you think we should offer? What do you think it's worth?" And even if I know everything that has sold in the neighborhood before I go, I'm like, I, "You need to give me a second to think about it." Now that I've been here. Because pictures are just never going to do it, you know? Right. So now that I've been here, let me go back, take a look at the comps, and then I'll tell you what I think. And you also need to discover what their goals are. Mm -hmm. I mean, if if they want to sell it, like, tomorrow, like, I need to move ASAP, Mm -hmm. uh, you just sell it, then that's one price. But if they want every last penny they can get out of it, Mm -hmm. and they don't care if it takes a year, that's another price. And you don't know that until you go on your listing appointment Mm -hmm. and ask them, what are your goals? Right. Right. And I always do give them those, you know, I give them a range. Yes. Um, And we both do that. Yeah. So, and, and I do think, you know, if you're a new agent, I mean, people ask Aaron and I do this all the time, which can be a a little bit awkward, truly. Um, But if, if you have agents in your office that are willing to let you tag along for a listing appointment, and there are people that you really respect and admire and you want to be like, then you need to go because you'll get to see everybody's style. Like on our team, everybody has a different style. I'm definitely less is more. There are people that do all kinds of, their listing appointment is probably like two or three hours. They're talking a lot. They're whatever. Very formal. Yes. Um, So I think it's important to get a sense of what all of the different styles are so that you can ultimately, you know, develop your own. But for for me and my approach to all business and not just listing presentations is it's more about understanding what the client needs and listening versus me being like, oh, like, here's why you hire me and here's why it's not about that at all. My $20 listing presentation about my company. Right, right. Um, because if I'm in the house, they already know that I'm awesome and my company's awesome, hopefully. So I don't think that there's a need to, um, to, uh, talk about that. And also most of the stuff that's in there is bullshit. I mean, I'm sorry, but like, (laughs) oh yeah, I don't know. I've looked at a couple, um, different companies. They all say the same thing pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. We're the best. (laughs) <laughs> we have buyers in France. Yeah. Uh, wow. That's really helpful. <laughs> um, anyway. Okay. So I hope that that helps. Um, it's totally normal to be nervous. And I think I was nervous probably the first three years of my real estate career in every single situation. I was nervous around all my buyers, all my listings. Um, I cried a lot. I cried a lot. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, that just goes away with time and experience. So good luck, new agent. Hope you like it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for writing into podcast at smithspencer.com. Don't forget to email all of your questions so you can have the world's smartest woman, Schmoopy, answer them um, related to real estate, business, life, whatever. Thanks for listening.